Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Sethum and welcome back to another video for Conan Exiles. Today in this video, folks, I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide, tips and tricks. Now, this video is, of course, aimed at people that are starting out in the game. And so it is a beginner's guide, but I'll also be covering some tips and tricks as well that you may or may not know. So if you guys enjoy this video, please do not forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, why not check out some of my other videos and guides here on this channel. Who knows, you might just enjoy them. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos and content to the channel. Also, for those interested, you can always find me on the Sethtopia Discord. Links to this, of course, you can find down below in the video's description as well as in a pinned comment from myself. Now, the vast majority of this video, I will be covering tips and tricks. And of course, a lot of people will know about them. But this is also aimed at people that are just starting out in the game or are not very good at the game and want to brush up on their skills. Of course, Conan Exiles is a survival game, meaning that you will have to watch your food, water, heat and all that sort of stuff, just as with any other survival game. Unlike other games such as our Conan Exiles does focus a lot on the combat mechanics and of course you can dodge, you can uh, perform combos and there are many other things that you can do. Conan Exiles allows you to tame creatures and animals which I will cover later on in the video but alongside that one interesting feature is that you can build and boy can you build. There is no limit to how big you can build in this game. Another interesting thing that you want to know about Conan Exiles is that you can climb. Now of course climbing is is stamina dependent as are most actions in this game and obviously having your inventory full or a lot of items in your inventory will affect how much stamina you use when climbing now let's have a look at some of the stuff that you can do of course as you can see i am quite encumbered and for the most of this video i will be using admin commands and stuff like that now in terms of attributes you can choose whatever you want to do in terms of abilities now mine is as always an encumbrance build because i do like to carry a lot of stuff with me of course for that i do sacrifice stamina strength as you can see, will give you strength, and these are the perks for strength. And each of these little perks in the attributes will give you a specific perk once you reach a specific level. So that is good to know, depending on what you want to build. In feats, this is where you can build and choose whatever you want to build. Now, you do have a certain amount of points when starting out in the game, but you can get more points by obtaining fragments of power, and you can eventually unlock everything in terms of religions there are a total of six religions five that you can choose at the beginning and the religion of jabal sag which you can unlock by performing and doing a specific dungeon all of these religions will allow you to of course summon the avatars for that religion and all of them will give uh, their own specific perk in terms of the gameplay as you can see in the game you have the option of having Full nudity, partial nudity, or no nudity at all. But that is dependent on your personal gameplay. Of course, there is also a server setting that allows you to have the nudity on if you wish it. Now, of course, uh, my servers do have full nudity on. But if you do not like the nudity on the server that you're playing, you can always disable it for your specific game. So that is a very nice feature. There, It does appear in two sections. It depends on how you want to play the game and what you want to see. Okay, so with that being said, then let's get into the more interesting stuff. Now, as you can see, this is my castle. It is still a work in progress, but you can build pretty much just about anywhere you want. And as I said, there is very little to no limitation in terms of how big you can build. This is quite amazing, of course, for this. It does impact the servers in terms of uh, the areas that you can build and the size of the map as... Well, Ark, for example, does have a limitation on the structures. Now, these are the altars that you can craft depending on the religion that you choose. And I strongly recommend starting out with the set religion. Now, the reason behind that is you will be able to craft the snake arrows early on, which do apply poison. When a altar has reached the maximum level, you will see the light that you saw going towards the sky and you will also see them on the map. That will allow you, of course, to summon Avatar. Over here, we have a Taming Pen. This is the third tier of Taming Pen. And you can put creatures in there that you find. Of course, that will be babies. For animals, you place them in there with the preferred food to, of course, turn them into the grown versions. Now, let's have a look at how to unlock that. You will find them in the feet. And in the feet, you'll find them uh, right here, I believe. 
there we go and at the bottom you will be able to unlock the thrall taker which will allow you to tame human npcs and turn them into thralls which is quite a big feature of the game you also have the taming pens and there's three versions of the taming pens as well as the wheels of pain the bigger they are or the higher the tier the better they are you can place them on the ground but i do recommend placing them on foundations it can be dodgy as well but it does work and uh, affect how long they are in the game for if you place them on foundations now now when you unlock the thrall taker and the wheel of pain you will also unlock the truncheon and the bindings you will use the truncheon to of course knock out the thralls and or the npcs to take them to the wheel of pain and turn them into thralls and the bindings you will have to bind them and drag them back to your base so i've placed in some uh shell bags. these are the easiest ones to get and tame up you can find them at the river around newbie area but i'll cover that later on in this video in terms of the creatures that you can tame in this game you can pretty much tame just about anything and there are several versions of creatures so for example you can get a normal creature and a greater creature which will have a ton of hp these are of course for the animals of course some of them will not necessarily be called the greater uh creature of that specific uh um uh, animal so, for example, the mammoth is a variation of the elephant, but it is the equivalent of a greater creature. You can also tame frost giants, should you choose to, and there are many other creatures that you can obtain, such as the undead skeletons. I'm just trying to remember where I placed my undead skeletons in the base. Ah, there we go. They're at this entrance. So, as you can see, you can get a lot of building pieces. Conan Exiles does have a lot of building pieces both for ornamental purposes as well as with functionality and so in terms of building it is quite good although it does have certain bugs but that is not what this video is about so let's go and uh have a look at an altar over here or a shrine uh these are some of the thralls these are some of the best thralls in the game and as you can see you can equip the uh thralls that you have tamed with armor and one thing that is very nice about that is that the armor does not take durability damage neither do the weapons that you equip them with thralls are of various uh tiers and classes so for example this is a fighter thrall it is a tier 4 thrall and you know it's a tier 4 thrall because it has a specific name you can also get priest thralls you can get crafting thralls that you can put in your crafting stations such as the armor's bench the uh fireball cauldron cooking stations and so on you can also get the dancer thralls which are of course performers and they will remove corruption corruption is a thing in the game which will of course reduce uh the amount of hp and stamina that you have which of course does impact what you can take on very important tip right here as you can see this is a tannery which is open you cannot lock it so do be careful where you place down your crafting station seeing as we're talking about these and that is because it does not matter if you are on a pvp or pve server you cannot lock them and so that means anyone can access what is in their inventory and can take out the items including the thralls and as you can see i do have a tier 4 thrall as i said a tier 4 thrall does not have the standard name it does have a specific name so that's how you will know it's a tier 4 thrall they do have specialized names so that of course also applies to the wheels of pain now of course the structures like wheels of pain taming pens they are accessible to anyone and they can take out anything and everything that is available there so you might want to try and close them within a building here we go we have some cupboards right here they are all open but they are placed on the inside so I will lock these up because these are lockable so you can do that with chests and cupboards however do not place them close to a window because again through a window a player and it does not matter if it's pve or pvp can access the cupboards now those are empty for a purpose just because and down here i have a vault room now vaults you can lock or unlock i do recommend keeping the vaults locked they are difficult to destroy and it does offer a vast space for storage so that is just to kind of show you now you can also just walk up to a vault to see what is in it if you are the player owning that vault i'm not sure if it is a vault that does not belong to you if you can see what is in it you might necessarily uh, or you might have to access the inventory i've never actually done such a thing so if you guys know the answer to that you can always put it down below 
So as you can see, I do have full nudity on. We have a dancer right here with regards to placing down the thralls. Once you have placed down a thrall, and that also applies to pets, you cannot put it back in your inventory. You take the thralls out of the wheel of pain, same thing applies to the pets, put it in your inventory and then you place them down wherever you want. However, you can have them follow you or you can pick them up and move them all around. However, you cannot place pets and thralls too close to each other as you saw there. Now, let's go up here and i'll show you what i've done with my main crafting stations as you will see i do have a crafting area and there are many many building pieces that you can place down but i have enclosed my crafting area and this is the crafting area that i use so that includes all of the cooking stuff and crafting stuff and in terms of building you can pretty much build everywhere if you can work out what the bugs are over here we have a torturer's bench so this is when you unlock the torturer's bench you will want to have a thrall in there to unlock the high end truncheons as well as the bindings and this is what you can unlock of course this is closer to the end of the game with regards to the truncheon truncheon does apply torpor damage or that's what i like to call it, it basically uh, it's basically a blunt weapon that does little damage and knocks out the thralls you can only use this for the thralls and i'm going to show you how to tame thralls and get yourself some high level thralls early on in the game uh for that you will need of course the best trench on that you have and you will want a blunt weapon fitting now this what this does it does apply to the weapon so you just drag it on top of the weapon and it increases the amount of torpor it does but I will not stop there. You can apply a truncheon to a thrall that you have. Take it with you in a NPC camp. So as I'm going to do here, I'm going to take the weapon off of this thrall. And then put a uh, blunt weapon fit non. Take off the weapon that she has. I've already engaged in combat, but you want to do this before the camp and of course as you can see she is now using the truncheon you can equip a truncheon yourself now this is a very important note do keep this in mind i strongly suggest that you set yourself up a thrall only for the truncheon once you have put a truncheon on to the thrall it does seem to break the ai and so therefore will not accept any other weapons uh it will just stand there looking at the enemy not necessarily doing anything so what i would recommend is that once you have placed a truncheon in a thrall's inventory and used it or even once you have placed the truncheon in a thrall's inventory is that you keep that thrall as a taming partner as you can see between myself and this particular thrall we are taking down the npcs really really quick obviously this is a very dangerous area that i am in this is uh end game content that I'm accessing, but I'm going to show you how I tame my own thralls. Now, of course, this one over here is a mini boss. You'll have to kill him. And if you come into this area, I strongly recommend that you kill the boss first and then deal with the camp. The reason behind coming in with the thrall is you can take all the camp out, then drag them one by one into a wheel of pain. Now, of course, you can craft the gruel by placing the seeds that you find from harvesting the grass around you. Uh, as well as the fibers into either a, a cooking stove or in a campfire or even in a uh, advanced campfire with fuel to burn it so you can use wood and press play and it will turn it into gruel and of course gruel is the fuel required to tame thrall so i'm gonna knock this guy out we're gonna use the bindings you'll have to place the bindings in your hot bar and then have it out Go up to the thrall that you just knocked out or the npc that you just knocked out as it becomes a thrall once you have tamed it and then drag it to the wheel of pain back at your base to put it into the wheel of pain just walk up to the wheel of pain and access the wheel of pain and the npc will be placed inside the wheel of pain as you can see i already have one that has been tamed this is an archer and that is what Gru looks like so press play once you have placed your thrall in and have the gruel in there and it should do it automatically. Do bear in mind, as I said, it does not lock so that means everyone can access what's in it. So do keep that in mind at all times. Once you have tamed your thrall or pet, you can of course place it down anywhere you want in the base considering that you don't place it too close to a structure or another NPC or thrall. 
So let's find a place for this. Of course, this guy is an archer. And the good thing about archers is they do come with their own versions of weapons. Of course, you can change it out for better weapons. And of course, if your thrall is an archer, it will come with a bow. However, it will not have ammunition, but it does not necessarily require ammunition to use the bow as it will use the simplest, most cheapest uh, sort of arrows. They will spawn in his inventory and he will use the bow with them. In terms of sandstorms, now of course this is a survival game. What you can do to survive anywhere in the world is have a foundation, two walls and a ceiling. Create the structure that I've got here and just go into the corner. As you can see in my upper left corner there is a house that is all white out or that becomes white that just tells you that you are now protected from a sandstorm now of course sandstorms are uh, random weather events that take place in the starting area or in the desert area and can travel across the map only in the desert area however if you are caught in the sandstorm without any protection or shelter you will start to lose stamina health and pretty much die out as they will do a lot of damage to you and ultimately you can always use the uh, terrain to find yourself some shelter and hide in a nook and cranny in a cliff uh, in terms of religions i recommend starting out with the set religion as this will allow you to craft these snake arrows which do apply poison and as you can see do not cost a lot of resources all you need is branches and zeals and zeals you can get from crafting anything in the altar in terms of leveling up really quick what i recommend that you do is that you fight world bosses i recommend starting this at around level 30 to 40 and for this i recommend using a thrall you do want to get a thrall with a decent amount of hp anywhere in the region of 4000 upwards and obviously place the best heavy armor on that thrall as well as the best two-handed or one-handed weapon that you can craft or have access to go up to a boss location and find a boss and kill it at this point you should be able to unlock the set religion if you have not chosen that and you should be able to craft these snake arrows you do not have to get engaged in the fight with the boss and i recommend you stay out of it and just dot up the boss with the snake arrows which will apply poison you don't have to have the best bow as the damage will come from the stacks of poison that you put on the boss as you can see over here now my thrall is quite powerful in that it is a tier 4 but you can do this early on in the game providing the thrall has at least 4000 hp heavy armor and a good weapon once you have killed the boss you want to harvest it with whatever you can harvest it it does not make a difference and you will get a skeleton key you can only unlock the chest that you find next to the world bosses at level 60 so you can stock up on the keys and unlocking the chest will of course give you a legendary weapon which you can then either use later on for yourself or put them on your thrall depending on your needs and desires uh, with that being said and done let's have a look at another easy way to get legendary weapons early on in the game so up here where we have this location right here you can find a bit of a boss he's nothing too special but when you kill him, he will drop one of three legendary items. It can be a cleaver, it can be a set of claws, or it can be a two-handed hammer, I believe, which is called Doom. Now, of course, as I said, this is a boss, so it will do a bit of damage, so I do recommend coming in with a Thrall to tank it. This area is also full of hostile NPCs, so do bear that in mind, as you will have to clear out an area before you actually go into the location where the boss spawns. I'm going to show you where the boss spawns. You can see that circle right there, that ring with stairs in the center there will be a were hyena now this time around i just got a normal hyena you can tell it's a normal hyena because it is the same size as the others whereas the boss is slightly bigger so after some waiting which is what you will have to do if you don't get the big hyena you'll have to come back and kill these guys over and over again to get the big hyena then you can go and kill the hyena and as you can see it will not have any skulls on its health bar a skull on a creature's health bar makes it a mini boss and three skulls makes it a proper boss depending on where you are located you want to be careful this creature will always drop some sort of an item and everything that it drops is legendary as you can see with this particular cleaver which is the maw of the hyena as with any and all items the legendary weapons do have durability and will take durability damage as you use them and to repair them you will need legendary repair kits which you can only obtain from specific creatures in the game 
However, you can always come back here and continuously farm them over and over again. And another important thing to note is that, as I said before, thralls come in various tiers. This one in front of me is a tier 4 thrall. You know it's a tier 4 thrall because it has a yellow bar and a specific name. As I said, they also have different professions, so it depends what you want them. You can have a fighter, archer, or crafting thralls that you can place in your crafting station. And depending on what tier they are, the higher the tier, the better the perks in terms of animals and creatures that you want to grab early on you can always grab the shellbacks and you can find the baby shellbacks wandering about there are several variations of shellbacks that you can get from them obviously you'll have to place them in a animal pen and i'm going to show you why you want to get the shellbacks now you will have to go through quite a bit but you also don't need anything specific to get a shell back with a lot of hp it just takes time so over here as you can see right here i've got three variations of shell backs and it does take a lot of time so i'll just place these guys down here and as you can see they have three different skins and that is because they have different hp this one has the lowest hp this one has a bit more and the one with the red shell has the highest hp uh, in terms of getting these guys to mature you can use anything that you see in the diet however you can just use fibers and this is why i recommend these guys when you're starting out because you can place down an animal pen and then get a bunch of these until you get this particular shell back right here which has quite a bit of hp now obviously it is not going to be as good as a thrall because you cannot put armor and weapons on it so you cannot increase its survivability that way however they are very plentiful and you can just keep doing this over and over again until you find uh or get a shell back that you want so i'm just gonna show you the difference in sizes there are slight differences there and uh, the one with the red shell is somewhat bigger however they also do a lot of damage so it's definitely having one of these guys with you early on now they do spawn around the river that i just showed you right there that is what is known as a newbie river and i'm going to show you what they look like in terms of grabbing and taming animals all you have to do is just walk up to a baby animal and interact with it now i have teleported here so it will take a bit for things to spawn in things are going down so, oh, there we go, they're fighting down there. So, these are the fully grown shell bucks, but as you travel across this particular area with the river you will see little shellbacks wandering about do bear in mind that both the grown-ups as well as the babies were around 50 pounds a piece so they do weigh quite a bit just walk up to them and then in my case because i'm on a computer i press e to interact and then they should be in my inventory now as you can see when i click on them they do of course have a spoil timer However, if you do not want to mature your creature and you want to save it for later, don't forget it does have a spoil timer and that is true for any baby animal that you will pick up in the game. But you can store them indefinitely for a little time when you want to mature them and that is by putting them in a preservation box. To do that, just place any creature in there and by doing so it will cancel out the spoil timer. This applies to any animal that you find in the wild it also applies to food and just about anything that has a spoil timer on it obviously for that to work you will also have to have ice in the preservation box that is it for this video folks i do hope that you have enjoyed it if you think i should have included something else or left something out you can always mention it down below in a comment and if you guys want to see more stuff like this again you can ask for it down below in a comment i do hope that this video helps out people starting out in the game and maybe i have shown you something that you did not know if you guys enjoyed it please don't forget to support this channel by hitting that like button subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself and if you have just subscribed why not check out some of my other videos and guides here on this channel who knows you might just enjoy them also for those interested you can always find me on the Sethopia discord links to this you can find down below in the video description as well as in a pinned comment from myself and don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when i upload new videos and content to the channel until next time stay safe folks <laughs>